Hello, and today I am here reviewing one of my absolute favorite writers, Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson's Greek Gods. First off, the cover is lovely. I love it. Ooh, I could just hug it. Actually, you can hug this book because it is massive. That's the only downside to it. It's so huge. Honestly, I think I would have preferred Harry Potter thickness with um, a little bit shorter because it was actually really, really kind of awkward to read. Because, let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I was to read this, this is how I look. This is how I look. This book is wider than I am when open. I mean, it's, it's really big. It's really big. Okay, but I'm kind of happy that it was big because it had some very, 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 very pretty illustrations in it that needed the correct size to really pop and I'm sorry my lighting is not that great right now but trust me the illustrations are so gorgeous I really really love the color scheme even the inside cover is kind of illustrated and I really like that um so I waited a while to get this book and um, it was simply because of paychecks didn't match up with um, the release date. But anyway, so I give this book five out of five stars. And I'm going to tell you how I rate a book because here lately I've been getting some hate on some of my other videos. I do give points for really pretty covers and illustrations. Um, so, you know... I'll add or take off like half a star for that. So, and then we have, I also look at target audience and what's appropriate for them. This is either young adult or children's. So, to me, it really, I'm really, really strict with that. And this book is perfectly fine. It even mentions, and it's dealing with Greek gods. Which is not the easiest topic to cover um, with children because, for one thing, gods in Greek and Roman mythology they fornicate a lot. Um, there's also some violence and things that has to be downplayed, and there's also some drinking. I mean, he was talking about Dionysus the god of wine and he was like but kids drinking's bad don't do it till you're like 45 I mean literally that's what it said and it was just it's very refreshing and also um, it's not written about in such a way that it condones bad habits as a matter of fact it's even like um, one of the stories was about the goddess of the hearth and it, she said, I don't want to get married because getting married is dangerous. And she goes on to tell about how, while there's all these reasons why she would not want to marry a god. So it's really, really interesting. I think that it's going to get kids interested in Greek and Roman mythology, which I think is so important. Especially for younger kids, like around 12-ish, 13-ish. Because in high school, when they move on to high school, you're going to have to read Shakespeare. And when you read Shakespeare, you need to know of mythology because there are some references. Um, even if it's just references to like Norse gods and things, which I heard that Rick Riordan is supposed to write a Norse god series. I'm sorry, I'm so excited. I love mythology anywhere. I love it. Um, as long as I can understand it. So, that was a little bit, I was a tiny, this book to me was a little bittersweet. I learned a lot of tales that I didn't know, and I've read a lot of mythology books. But, some of my favorites weren't in here, and that kind of, that kind of killed it for me. I really love that Rick Riordan, in a, pre, in a previous book, one that he wrote, he mentioned Echo and Narcissus, and that is my absolute favorite myth of all time. And they didn't put it in here. And honestly, I think that that is just one of the best examples of gods and goddesses screwing 
with um, lesser beings' lives because the nymph, well, I'm not going to get into it, but anyway, it wasn't in here. There's also some other ones. Basically, if it was not directly involved with a god, then it does not appear in this book. However, like I said, I really think that this is going to get kids interested in Greek and Roman mythology, which is a great thing. Also, it 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 does it in such a funny way that it's 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 so refreshing. It really, really is. It's very refreshing. I love Rick Riordan's writing because it is. It's very refreshing. Okay, we also find out a few things in this book, and um, I think the biggest one is this book is written from Percy Jackson's point of view, hence the Percy Jackson's Greek gods. And we find out that him and Annabeth survive. Because it's written after Blood of Olympus, which I'm so excited for. So, we know that Percy and Annabeth survive, or Percybeth is alive and well. So, that's really, really awesome. That's one thing we know, and we know that they have to win or else he wouldn't be writing this and he said that the gods might get onto him for writing this book but hey if it so I'm guessing that they win but as for the secondary characters we don't know if they live or not Percy and Annabeth to me are the main characters um the other characters are like Ron and Hermione or maybe not even like that but anyway to me those are like kind of secondary Karen to the secondary characters. So, we don't know who lives and dies yet. And there have been no leaks on that at all. But anyway, get this. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's definitely something that I am happy to have on my shelf. I do recommend buying it um, now. Because to me, it... I don't use, um, oh my god, Kindles or any kind of reading device because to me, for one thing, books are a lot more durable than a digital device and I'm really, really clumsy. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've washed my cell phone. My cell phone is a very durable cell phone, but I've washed it like three or four times. I'm really clumsy and I'm forgetful. So, books are just better. One time I lost a book for like three months. And I finally found it. And then I finished reading it. But, that kind of thing happens to me. So, I don't think digital devices are for me. So, I will always buy print. And, um... So, anyway, like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you prefer. Kindles or real books? And tell me what you think about Percy Jackson and Blood of Olympus. And what you think will happen. As for me, I say one character that's definitely going to die is Nico. I really think Nico is going to die. But I hope not. But that's who I think is going to die. So like, comment, and subscribe. And tell me what you thought about Percy Jackson's Greek Gods. I thought it was hilarious, refreshing. And I think that it will get other people interested in Greek and Roman mythology. So that's always a good thing. I could talk forever about this book. It was flawless to me. I did not find any grammatical errors. It flowed really well. I love the way it was set up. I do. I love the way it was set up. And I loved how it, it just kind of flowed all together. We started at the very beginning and then we just kind of went down. And it was just, it was really good. It was really cool. I've never seen one set up like that and I loved it. I love the setup. I would love to see him just do a Greek mythology book like this, but like just on all the old myths and rewrite them for character for today's youth and oh, it was just so good. So anyway, tell me what you think. Tell me what you think about Blood of Olympus and tell me what you think about Greek and Roman mythology and mention your favorite myth. And what you think about the Norse God books that Rick Riordan is supposed to be writing.